Kira sees big green swirling spots the size of Alvanian melons. Damar teaches Zial a trick, and Dukat is no longer the chief military advisor of the Tatapa Consul. His mother disowned him, his wife took his children, and she left. Hello, and welcome to the seventh row with Sirach Lofton. <laughs> hello, hello. We are do- joined by a very special guest, Dr. Una McCormack. Hi there. My name is Ryan T. Husk. I'm just glad we got through that beginning. It took me two other tries. <laughs> There's some tongue twisters in there. I don't even know if I said it right. Um, we are doing a review of Deep Space Nine's Return to Grace, uh, directed by Jonathan yeah. West, written by Hans Beimler. And the story is by, I think, a new person, Tim Benko, or Tom Bonko. Benko. Do, you, do we know who that is? Have we seen him before? No, I have a just... 20 minutes before I came on here, I looked him up thinking, I've never seen that name before. And it turns out he's the only person to have done something like written, directed, and edited an episode of Star Trek. Edited, you're right. So he's like a really interesting guy, yeah. Um, Which I didn't know. I didn't know, and I should do. I should know that kind of thing. Yeah, he's edited 58 episodes of Voyager, Mm. uh, 16 of Deep Space Nine, and 40 episodes of Next Generation. His name is Tom... Benko, you're right. That is very good trivia. And he directed two episodes of Next Generation, and he wrote two episodes of Deep Space Nine, Return to Grace, and one we actually did a little while ago, The House of Quark. Mm -hmm. Wow. See, I I shouldn't have said I looked that up 20 minutes ago. I should have been really smooth ago. I I think, gentlemen, actually, you're fine. (laughs) (laughs) If you look him up, you'll see that. If you look him up like I did 20 minutes ago, yeah. (laughs) <laughs> so Una here, uh, for those that aren't familiar, is quite familiar with Cardassian lore and Deep Space Nine lore. She is a writer. She's written a good amount of books, several of them. I'd say, what what was it, like eight or ten? Oh, yeah, I promise oh. I've, lost, I've lost track now. But coming up for a dozen Star Trek novels, quite a few Doctor Who novels as well. So uh, right. yeah, the word they start using is veteran. And then yes. you think, oh, right, okay, I need to <laughs> need to oil my joints. <laughs> right, so we'll talk a little bit more about yeah. that a little later. Uh, she's also written, I believe it was the fourth book of Discovery and the first novel of Picard. So right. very well versed, and she's a Cardassian expert. And this is an awesome Cardassian episode. Mm. Kind of, it's kind of like a Kira episode, but, you know. So let's talk about it, shall we? We shall. And Go. Albanian. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So Sirach and I have a little thing that we've noticed that in Star Trek, whenever they're describing something, it's always something that ends in an I-A-N and yeah. then something that's familiar to us, like a, a Luvanian rat or an in Albanian... Mel- in Carrion Wool, that's one that comes off the uh, top of my head. Yeah, it's, it's ridiculous, isn't it? You think, how is that different? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, it's it's the kind of trick you do as a writer to go, oh, I'm really, really stuck. I need to make it feel a bit alien, but I'm feeling quite tired today. So <laughs> let me get my let me get my random uh, syllable generator. Bing, 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 and then put fish or uh, you know <laughs> or something at the end of it. Shh, that's a writer's trick, you now know. But you're absolutely right. Baldarian uh, slugs or something like that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Baldarian dung beetle. Exactly that. So, uh, or, or the other thing to do is to take an ordinary word and just stick a color in front of it, like silverfish or, uh, you know, that kind of thing. <laughs> Gold petals. So, do they, uh, do we ever see the planets when they mention these places? Like, are these, these places just completely like abstract, like Alvanian? Are there, have we ever seen uh, the Albanians? Well, do you know, I think it oh. takes us until season three to see Cardassia Prime. So I'm right. not holding out much hope for uh, <laughs> the Albanians, to be right. honest. And if we did, I suspect it would look very, very, very like quite a uh, harsh piece of terrain slightly outside <laughs> Los Angeles. That would be suspicious. <laughs> <Right. laughs> With plenty of melons growing around. Exactly yeah. that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Um, 
they do always kind of shoot some kind of crazy planet, but you could definitely see like the Hollywood Hills in the background. And you're like, oh, I think, I think that's Malibu. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's not. It's, it's the Bolian Commissary. Yeah, the Bolian That's another one. Yeah, Bolian ants or something like that. Right. So you know, this episode. This episode really, I was going to just say before you get into there, Ryan, no, was directed by Jonathan West. I don't want to forget. And Jonathan was our, um, I want to say he was our DP on, on the show for many years after Marvin Rush left in the um, second, third season, I think, to do right. Voyager. I think so you mentioned that, yeah. This, this might have been, if I'm not mistaken, Jonathan's de- directorial debut on DS9. Because he was always there behind the camera and setting up shots, but... Um, you'll see him. He appears in the documentary as well, talking about his experience. But I just wanted to give a shout out to uh, his directing this episode. Wow. He was the DP in 118 episodes. Uh, That's more than two thirds of the episodes and uh, 47 episodes in the next generation. 47 is the magical number we all know. So that's pretty cool. And he's, he's actually directed six episodes of Deep Space Nine. So we'll be hearing his name a little bit more. He uh, directed Shikar, which uh, we all remember, and this one, and then a few more coming up. Cool. Yes. Yeah. So um, we did, speaking of Shikar, uh, Una, on this show, we like to mention the non-appearance mentions, which is somebody that their name is mentioned or they're talked about, but they're not actually in this episode. It's kind of like a credit that goes you know, lost, and, and everybody was talking about how Shakar is only in three episodes, but he feels like he's in more. Mm-hmm. So we surmise that he must get a lot of non-appearance mentions, and he did today, his first non-appearance Is he mention. really only in three episodes? See? I'm yeah. amazed. That's incredible. Yeah, that's, that's, that's a, a, well, I'm a bit surprised about that. I would, if you asked me to guess, I would have said 10. I would have, I would have, but, but now you say it, I think, well, actually, no, we don't, we don't see him that much. It's, it's one of the things the show's so clever at that, uh, mm-hmm. um, and why I think people really like the show um, is this sense that uh, you're not just seeing uh, maybe half a dozen people once a week. There's something living and breathing going on behind it. That, that promenade feels inhabited, you know, you're kind of going, yeah. well, I know that the florist is there. We just haven't met them yet. Yeah. And, uh, and that's exactly, it's just really, really clever. And I think it touches on one of the things I was just saying before, that we don't see Cardassia Prime. We don't, I don't think we, they technically visit the, that, the planet until something like season three. Mm. But we have a real sense of what it's like and, uh, and how it feels. Um, and they do that in this episode, I think, they, they, those opening, you know, Kira's seeing these Alvanium melon-sized spots <laughs> because there's a breakdown in public health. So just these throwaway lines, you've suddenly got this whole planet sketched. It's really, really nifty world building. And, um, and they do it with characters. So I'm amazed he's only in three. That's great. That's a, that's a really good fact. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And, and just to piggyback off what you said, uh, what they also do with the character building is kind of revisit storylines that they established early on. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. For example, we, we had in this episode kind of a bringing back of um, the story of Dukat and his daughter and how that mm-hmm. interaction played out with Nana, uh, with Kira in the beginning when she first learned about it. And uh, you see how that it's affected him to this day. You also see kind of a carry on of the flirtation between mm-hmm. Dukat and Kira. So I, I love the way they extend these stories and kind of blend them in throughout the season so you you're never really mm-hmm. losing touch with with uh you know what's up to date with each character mm-hmm. yeah and they do you the credit the viewer to say okay we'll go you well maybe you you didn't catch that one but we'll bring you up to speed pretty quickly all, all we need is a line of dialogue to give you that context mm-hmm. and then right. you can do the work and, and imagine the rest of that um, or if you've seen that episode, you'll go, oh, wow, yeah, I remembered that. And it's a reward to you that you were, you were there and you saw this play out. Um, and, um, and, and again, it's, it's one of the great attractions of the show because I think, as we all know, uh, it, you know, science fiction wasn't really serialized. So um, right. that's, that's what makes it so, so special, I think. But yeah, just this, this sense of um, a deep world that's going on behind, a really rich story world 
uh, just always makes DS9 so enjoyable, I think. Mm -hmm. And yeah, and they, they keep the story going even when the characters aren't there. They just give us one sentence about, oh, mm. Shakar is doing this, or oh, we know that it's not just a one-off thing that, you know, mm. the more they mention that person, that character is getting developed, you know, whether we see yeah. them or not. Uh, I do wonder if they ever mentioned that to the actors. I feel like maybe they didn't, but I feel like it would have been a service to the actors when they do come back to say, by the way, you've been mentioned three other times since then. And here's what you're, you know, what they've said about you that could help the actor kind of play that, you know, play that character a little bit better. I would yeah. think. Yeah. Um, I, I can just say from, from my own experience, uh, guest starring on TV shows, sometimes you're in a position where you don't know anything about right. what's going on as, a, as an actor. So you're walking into it. I don't even know who's the star of the show or, you know, <laughs> like I, 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 sometimes you don't even know you've, you know, never watched a show. You don't know who the star is. You don't know who the regulars are. Um, you don't know where they are in the arc of any kind of storyline. Right. Mm -hmm. So you're literally just walking in saying your lines, doing your thing and, and leaving. So, um, I think Duncan kind of referred to that. Right. In, yeah. In, I, I was just going to say that. Yeah. So it's the, there is uh, there is a little bit of kind of a feeling your way around when you get onto the set and try to fill out, you know, what's the hierarchy and how mm -hmm. everything kind of functions. But uh, I have been in a position where I had no idea what the show's about. Or what, <laughs> you know, I had, a, I had a very general idea of what the show's about. Like, you know, mm -hmm. this is a show about aliens. And that's about all I know. <laughs> the, the best you get. Yeah, yeah, for those of you that uh, also, uh, maybe this is your first time watching this show, we'll catch up to speed. Last week we had Duncan Regeer on who played uh, Shakar, and he said that he was on set and everybody was saying, oh, the emissary's coming, the emissary. And he kept like looking around going like, <laughs> and finally he says, you know, who who's the emissary? And I forgot, I think he said it was Renee maybe that was where he's like, oh, that's... That's Avery. Oh, okay. But that's, oh, that's what okay. it is. Yeah, Nobody yeah. tells you what's going right. on. Yeah, you just yeah. expect you and to And of course, they're going to assume that the first minister of Bajor knows that. And it's about <laughs> Bajor, which, oh, that Bajor. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, yeah. I had a question for you, Una. Um, as I was watching this, one of the things that came across my mind was um, the orders that Ducat got from uh, headquarters when he called back he, he thought he was going to get a positive response and, and be elevated mm. to this hero like status but instead he was ordered kind of to stand down and and not and my question basically is is that cons consistent with um with what you think Cardassians would do in such a situation I think I think in this case it is because um, I think what they what they're doing this this thing that we're talking about about sketching a world very very lightly um, they 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 do a lot of this work up front where they tell you uh, we know there's this ongoing war but right up front they and they dramatize it through you know this kind of jokey scene almost with Kira we know that there's this kind of collapse going on back at Cardassia we know there's been a, a change of regime you've got a civilian instead of a military government. And you know that really they're, they're kind of in decline. They've got, you know, outbreaks of plague and infrastructures crumbling. You know, it all sounds very familiar. Um, so I do think it's plausible. Um, I did a, I, I wrote a novel actually, which kind of tracks all this. It's kind of set on Cardassian. It tracks all this period from uh, quite early in the show to after the show ends. And you kind of have to piece it together from all these little throwaway lines, like you're kind of catching a line here or a line there. And it's actually pretty consistent. You watch this sort of decline of an imperial power as they pull out of Bajor, and then the military kind of implode and a civilian government takes over, but they, they can't quite hold it together. And then um, are we, we're okay going into spoilers, aren't we? We're not, we're not working under a. Oh, absolutely. And this is yeah, the yeah. Lotus Flower, right? That you're talking about? This uh, no, this is another novel called uh, The Never Ending Sacrifice. It kind of tracks Cardassia's history. Okay. There's an episode earlier on, a uh, much earlier episode, about a little boy called Rugal who's brought up on Bajor, but he's a Cardassian boy. Mm -hmm. And they send him back to Cardassia at the end. And it's, it's his story. And we, we follow him through the, the Dominion War and all these sorts of things. And you see kind of the collapse of Cardassia. So I had loads of fun. Wow, I just was fun. taking these throwaway lines and kind of piecing them together. But it is pretty consistent. You just see this sort of decline. And then as it kind of, you know, you've got all these outbreaks of plague and they're not holding it together. What's the kind of thing you get next? You get a strong man 
who says, let's make Cardassia great again. And that's Gulder Katz bringing in the Dominion army. So it's all real credit to the writers here because it's all very subtly woven in, but you have a real sense that they know what Cardassia's story is going to be. And it's going to be this <clears throat> collapse into, uh, you know, a, a, a military dictatorship and mm. an occupation at the end, of course, uh, which is kind of the natural, uh, you kind of start with the end of the occupation of Bejo and you finish with the occupation of Cardassia. It's all beautifully done. But you have to, I mean, you have to kind of, you, it's almost like you need to be commissioned to write a novel about it, to sit and <laughs> piece all this stuff together. But don't worry, I've done it for you. <laughs> Did you? It does work, yeah. It, it I sounds the right person there. <laughs> yeah, it <laughs> sounds did. like you, I mean, you really did your homework. Did you get all of that information from other novels or just from what's on screen? That one I mostly did from what's on screen. I mean, you know, I, I, I watch DS9 for pleasure and rewatch it for pleasure. And then somebody comes along and says, could, could you do this for money? And you kind of go, yeah, that'd be amazing. That'd be fantastic. So to <laughs> kind of get to sit and have to take notes. And it's real, it's real kind of geeky fun. You kind of sit there with your spreadsheet and the dates and where characters are and all this. And it's classic world building that any writer would do. Um, but all these little mentions, you, you, you sort of try and weave together into a consistent story and, and you build up a picture of, of what this world must have been like, just as it's all falling apart. You know, they can't get the vaccines out in time or they, mm. uh, you know, the, the water isn't clean or, um, you know, the, the, the tram system isn't working anymore. But at the same time, you've got all the kind of elite having expensive dinners and this kind of thing. You know, it's all, it all rings a lot of bells. <laughs> it, it yeah, really Space Nine it's, always uh, does. <laughs> it really does. It's, uh, you know, it's uh, declining imperial powers are the same whether in, they're in space or not, I think. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Sure. Well, since we're on uh, the topic of your novels, of which there are several we mentioned, um, let's talk about very quickly you wrote the first novel of Star Trek Picard That's as right, well. Yeah. And I feel like that's just got to be such an amazing situation. Mm -hmm. But but I can't tell if it's, if it's like super restricted because it's like their very first novel. And so they're like, okay, it has to be this. It has to be this. Don't say this. Don't say this. Don't say this. Or if they just say, ah, you, you've written a bunch of books. You're good at this. Go nuts. <laughs> no, it wasn't like that. It wasn't like that at all. No, because obviously this was a this was a really significant show. It was a it was a huge deal. You know, Patrick Stewart coming back. It was a real. You know, there was such a. I, I'm sure you remember. There's such a big buzz around it. Mm -hmm. um, so it, it felt like a really. You know, you're kind of being entrusted with 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 something that that people were lavishing a lot of love and attention and investment into. Um, and it was an absolute blast. It was just a, it was just so much fun from, from start to finish. I, I was, I was getting scripts as they were coming through. So I was kind of getting the scripts and revisions of scripts. Right. Um, everything, obviously everything under a very tight NDA, non-disclosure and that kind of thing. To the extent that, you know, when the first episode goes out, you're sitting there going, I'm not sure people should be watching this. <laughs> you know, that's how kind of <laughs> strict it all feels. So to people watching this, that can't be right. Um, so you're getting all these scripts and, and, and just immersing yourself in, in this storytelling. Um, I was lucky that the, the novel is a prequel novel. So it tells the story of why uh, Picard resigns mm -hmm. from Starfleet. Um, so I, I uh, was, uh, that meant that I wasn't going to be affected by stuff that happened towards the end of the show, but I had to be kind of consistent with glimpses that we saw. Of, we, we do see him going into his resignation meeting and we're, we're picking up characters like Rafi who are in the show. Uh, uh, we see some of her earlier story. But again, you're doing a similar thing to what I was doing with Never Ending Sacrifice. You're sort of um, piecing together what you know from over here and turning that into a kind of uh, consistent but fully fledged story over here. So um, it's great fun. It's a kind of um, storytelling as as, um, as as jigsaw puzzle as well. Um, and um, trying to get tone and, and character right. So um, it's just a blast. It's a, it's, a, it's a great way to spend the day. <laughs> Seems like it. Yeah, good fun. Um, I, my question actually, um, really quickly to follow up on that was, um, when you're giving those parameters, how much, how much of it is your own creative and how much is it like you have to tell this story? 
Oh, uh, well, well, what I did in this case was uh, I worked very closely with uh, Kirsten Beyer, mm-hmm. who's the co-creator of Picard and is, um, uh, has, you know, has written for Discovery and so forth. And, and Kirsten had been a Star Trek novelist. She's, she's written a lot of Voyager novels. That's, that's what she was doing before she, um, she moved into TV writing. So she really knows what that process is like. And um, she and I get on extremely well. Uh, uh, we, we were sort of very simpatico in kind of the kind of stories we want to tell and um, the kind of character work we like doing. So we had a couple of sort of transatlantic calls where we, we sort of sat and thrashed through uh, what we wanted to do. Um, okay. And then and then I just had the freedom to go off it, you know, everything down to that. That was kind of broad strokes of the story, which is very common for TV writing. You're going to be writing collaboratively. And then somebody goes off and, you know, writes a first draft of the script. Uh, so then I... and that meant I went off and wrote, you know, uh, the novel, which is about hundred thousand words. Um, but within that, I had I had pretty much freedom to, uh, you know, uh, what the scenes were going to look like, the the kind of rise and fall. So it there are constraints, but they always feel collaborative. They never feel like they're closure. They always feel like they're generating. You're working with someone to generate better story, um, and that that's what TV time writing's like. You don't feel it like constraint. You feel it like collaboration. Um, mm. So uh, that's why I enjoy it. Wow. Um, you know, I do have a, a question, you know, the, my little nerd heart in me has, has a major <laughs> question uh, that I'd like to ask you about the Deep Space Nine books you've written, but I'm wondering if we have enough time to talk about it. We may have to hold it until after the, uh, the other side of the break. Uh, sure. What do you think, Sirach? I know, I know. Uh, it's a great teaser. I think that I think you broke it now, so we, we will. We might as well. Um, Ask a cut, yeah. <laughs> uh, one thing to mention, though, absolutely, everybody mm-hmm. at home, uh, make sure to go to our Patreon page. That's patreon.com slash the seventh rule. Uh, then you can join us and be part of our free-for-alls at the end of every episode. You can uh, get all the, the footage before everybody else does, all kinds of stuff. Ciroc will come over and cook you scrambled eggs. We've got like the coolest things. Uh, Patreon.com slash the seventh rule. What are you going to say now, Ciroc? <laughs> I, I mean, I do have a world famous egg game, egg chef game. So Really? <laughs> it, is, it is known. Damn, I could go for some eggs right now. Yeah, bring those eggs to Cambridge. (laughs) I'd uh, I'd eat those eggs. I love eggs. I might have to do that. What kind of eggs are we talking about? (laughs) Uh, I do them any any which way, Um, but my my recipe and my own signature is the scrambled cheese eggs. Mm. Wow. <laughs> See, I thought you were going to say something like, oh, they're Aldavian eggs. You know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Ciroc's yes. famous okay. Aldavian mud eggs. <laughs> yes, yes. The Bolarian green eggs and ham. Uh, no. Right. Um, yeah, I, I, I have a really uh, good chef game when it comes to breakfast only. Oh, yeah. Yeah. all right. It's breakfast that counts. Breakfast yeah, and steak. It yeah. It's, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> All right, so we will uh, take a break. I'm hungry, and uh, we'll be right back on The Seventh Rule. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to The Seventh Rule with Sirach Lofton. Hello, hello. We also have Dr. Una McCormack here. Hello. My name is Ryan T. Usk. We are doing a review of Return to Grace, Season 4 of Deep Space Nine. Really cool episode. Kira and Ducat are... Well, Ducat's having fun. Kira is never having fun with Ducat. She won't allow it. Here are the trivioids that may or may not have made the cutting room floor at the beginning of the show. Kira starts seeing big green swirling spots the size of Alvanian melons. The Klingon invasion has all but destroyed the Cardassian health system. Going to some obscure Cardassian outpost to share some Bajoran intelligence about the Klingons isn't exactly something Kira is good at. I know why I didn't pick that one at the beginning. (laughs) (laughs) That's what she said. It's not not something I'm good at. Uh, Ducat is no longer the chief military advisor of the Tatapa Consul. His mother disowned him and his wife took his children and left. Ducat is very glad that Kira convinced him not to kill his own daughter. (laughs) Uh, It's tradition for Cardassian captains to take a percentage of the haul. Uh, Cardassian phase disruptor rifles have 4.7 megajoule power capacity three millisecond recharge, and two beam settings. 
Uh, I'm not going to do the Federation one because that one was even crazier. <laughs> uh, Ducat says, lately when my mind wanders, I find myself thinking of Gull Marat. Mm -hmm. And Damar teaches Zial a trick and Kira wants to adopt Zial. All right. Lots of good stuff in this episode. Lots mm -hmm. of cool Cardassian stuff. Was there uh, something, Una, that... Um, Oh, you know what? We owe her a question, don't we? Oh, no. <laughs> All right. Yeah, yeah we owe her a question. Oh, cool. Instantly um, going to get this wrong. <laughs> no, no, we owe you a question about uh, your book writing before, oh, yeah. and, and then we'll get back into this episode. Uh, I did want to ask, out of the several Deep Space Nine books that you've written, do you have a favorite and why? Oh, wow. That's a really tricky one. I think, uh, so I'm going to say there are two. So the, the one I've mentioned already, Never Ending Sacrifice, which is mm -hmm. uh, just covers this great span and deals with um, Cardassian history all through this period. And I, uh, I'm really proud of that book. It's a, it, it's a pretty good book, I think. Um, and then I did a book called The Crimson Shadow, which is set after um, the show, the, the end of the show. Uh, and it, uh, it focuses on Garrick and Picard. The Enterprise goes to Cardassia. Cool. Uh, and it's, yeah, yeah, I know, wow. I know exactly that. Um, <laughs> and it's, uh, it's part of a big series. And uh, there were five of us did five books together. And uh, they were kind of dealing, dealing out the books. And they turned to me and they said, looks like you're going to have to take the Enterprise to uh, uh, Cardassia with Garrick. And I'm like, oh, what a shame. <laughs> And I love that book. It, it kind of, it, it sort of roars along. I love writing the character of Garrick. I think any writer loves a, a character like that. And um, that was my first New York Times bestseller. So that was, that was kind of my, um, that oh, was wow. a very important book for me as well as, uh, as well as just being an absolute riot. Uh, so those are my two favorites, I think. Um, the ones I'm really proud of. Mm. Uh, very Cardassian centered. <laughs> so so would, you, would you say Garrick is your favorite Cardassian to write for? Oh yeah, absolutely. I mean, it, it's not, the dialogue kind of writes itself. It just, um, you know, it's right. just, it's just a, it's just a riot. Um, the internal narrative is really, really good. It's uh, uh, playful. It's fun. And I find when I write the character of Garrick, uh, he uses vocabulary that I didn't know I knew. So it's slightly disconcerting <laughs> as well. It's like, I didn't know I knew that word. You know, no, you've been possessed by a, an alien interrogator. So it's a, it's a great character. You can see why the writers developed that character and run with it. Uh, and then so brilliantly performed, obviously. Uh, so, so yeah, those are my favorites. Yeah. Right. When you say that the character kind of writes himself, uh, mm. it, it does make sense. The way he was just so well-written and so well-performed mm that mm. at that point you could put the character in any situation and you know what he's going to say and how he's going to say it and yeah. how much he's going to give away some of it and some of it he's not and he's going to use all this eloquence and charm and you don't quite know how how far he's going to push it and I, i'll note i'll note as well that it's very typical of garrick that even though we're reviewing an episode in which he doesn't appear <laughs> Yeah, he's, he's taken so over our discussion. <laughs> yeah. He infiltrates. He does infiltrate. Exactly that. An, an episode in which Ducat says, I am the last yeah. Cardassian, and we're talking about Garrick. Absolutely, absolutely on oh, point there. I poor think. Ducat. <laughs> Gull Casanova over here. Oh, so, dear, yeah. Yeah, about oh, wow. them. Do you feel like this was... Kira's softest moment with him. I mean, he, she's definitely <laughs> changed her tone with him. She still keeps him at, at arm's length. But when he said, will you come to dinner? She said yes, relatively easily, it seemed. Yeah, I, I, think, I think if this is Kira's softest moment, then, you know, you, you've, got a fairly, you've got a fairly good piece of concrete uh, mm. that um, uh, Dukat <laughs> yeah. is hitting up against. Um, it's, a real, uh, it, it's a really uneasy relationship to watch, I think, uh, a really, really uncomfortable relationship. And I, even though he makes that offer, you know, come with me at the end, there's not a second that she is tempted. There's mm. no reality in which Kira would 
would run off to the hills with with Golder Cat. It's just right. never going to happen. Right. It was almost um, surprising he's even asking. Like, what are you thinking? <laughs> well, uh, that's that's very de Cat, isn't it? It sort of yeah. seems plausible. Why would why would anybody not want to run off into the hills with me? So it, it's very very <laughs> within character, I think, for de Cat. But she's she's not at any second tempted, and I think it's chiefly for diplomatic reasons that professionally perhaps she feels she has to um, uh, humor this man to some extent. And then um, later it's for the sake of his daughter that mm. she continues having any relationship with him. It's for Zial's sake. Uh, I think that there's any interaction. I think as well that relationship, when we're watching it here, we don't know about Ducat's later association with Kira's mother. Uh, but when you rewatch an episode like this, you're kind of watching it going, Oh man, you're really, you're a real <laughs> creep, you know? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> really, really, he's, he's unequivocally the, vis- the, the villain of Deep Space Nine for me. I, I find him a really irredeemable character. I'm sorry, did you, did you say the hero? I didn't. Oh, he, sorry, just, I, did vil- I did say uh, villain, yeah. didn't I? I yeah, hope I did. <laughs> Pretty sure you was said it, hero. Was it Garrick kind of snuck in there? He's just talking <laughs> to me again. But uh, yeah, it's a, a really uneasy, uneasy thing to watch. I make a joke about Deep Space Nine that what I really like about it is that my favorite things are that it's a show that is about um, hand-to-hand combat and dating. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and I think this is a really this episode is a really really good example of this because even through that dinner they're having, you're thinking, is she going to break his nose? You know, it's sort of like that that, that line between we are having a date and we are having a we're having a fight <laughs> is really 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 close, uh, yeah. and I think it plays out uh, 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 through this episode. So um, I find that a really a really uneasy relationship to watch. Uh, mm. Actually, but Kira, Kira's got the upper hand. Uh, I, I wouldn't chance my luck with Kira. She always does when in mm. that situation with him. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, there was a moment where I thought that the the truth made her laugh, and that was when he was kind of pressing her about Shakar and why she was with Shakar, and she said, "What business is of what? What is it your business?" Mm. And his response was kind of like, well, I kind of want to get close to you because it might benefit my own rise back to where I need to go. And I think yeah. that was a revealing statement, which she laughed and it, it actually enjoyed the, his honesty in that moment, I thought. Um, yeah. Right? Because yeah. the way she reacted to it, she was like, oh, that's what it is. Like, <laughs> okay, that's why you've been... That's that makes sense. Yeah. That makes sense to me, right? Yeah, um, yeah. But at least you're not lying about it. <laughs> right, right. At least you know that I can believe. Um, and then the other issue was um, when he asked her out to dinner, he did it in the presence. First of all, he did it after apologizing for being rude to her while mm-hmm. they were doing that simulation thing. But then he did it, he did it in the presence of, uh, his daughter, and I think that she kind of played a look over to her, like mm. I'm not gonna reject your dad in right. front of you in this kind of way. I thought that was played a big role in why she accepted. Right, and I expected yeah. Zial to be there at the dinner as well, like almost Me like you, like she would say, "Okay, I'll do it if as Zial is as, there." Right, because if she's yeah. not there, then why the heck would I? You know. <laughs> That kind of yeah, thing. that's that's a really good point actually. That she feels she can't refuse in front of ZL and and expecting right. ZL to be there. And oh no, she's not. Of course, this was always going to be a romantic dinner in 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 your head. You know that right. we have this we have this relationship. Does she say that line to him somewhere in the show? You know this this is a fiction that you have in your mind. Uh, it's about it's a read on her between. face for 42 yeah. straight minutes. <laughs> it really, really is, isn't it? Yeah. yeah she has well, a he, great yeah. line in a later episode where, you know, he's saying to her, oh, there was a time you would have taken a Cardassian threat seriously. She goes, yeah, <laughs> not anymore, mates. You know? <laughs> no, you know, there, was, there, there was a moment where he, he kept poking in on Shakar. Mm-hmm. I mean, she, he mentioned the file that he kept on him with all the, right. all the women that he slept with, right? That and dude I was, was so jelly, man. <laughs> he, was, I, he really tried to out that guy. I mean, so much haterade. Um, but, no. <laughs> totally. <laughs> yeah. but, but, he's, but he said he's, he did a probing kind of poking line at her where he said, I kind of take you for being with more complicated men, right? 
And then her response was maybe I prefer simple, yeah. you know, simple man or something like She's that. She's like, whatever kind of man you're not, that's what I'm into. <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly I'm, that. I'm whatever you say. <laughs> yeah. So I love that interaction. And that, that was pretty much the gist of the whole thing, you know. And she also pointed out one thing. I mean, he did say another honest thing about her, her inclination. He said, do you like powerful men? Mm-hmm. Right. Because he, he did mention the two people that she was with, both being like ministers and high level uh, du jour and government officials. So he did point that out. And I don't think I think there is some level of truth to that. Mm. Yeah, possibly. Because she's known Shakar from when they were, we were they were kind of Fighting, grubbing around yeah. in caves together. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Uh, and Kira is a powerful woman. You know, she's she's right. a she's a very prominent member of the militia. She's the right hand to the emissary. Uh, so um, works as much for her, I think. And um, yeah, I think like you say, so long as it's not to cut. Yeah. <laughs> so long as it's not. He's, he's like anybody but you, basically. Yeah, except possibly Garrick. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he just said, and there was a line he said, I can't find it uh, in my notes, but he's basically just said, uh, oh, this is just motivation for me to get my powerful uh, position back. Yeah. You know? oh. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> in your dreams, all in his head. Yeah. And one thing I just want to say I thought was clever about the writing on this and, <clears throat> and that I thought was really the undercurrent to the episode. I felt as though she was teaching him, right? She was teaching him how to be the kind of fighter that she is. Right. Which is, you know, uh, a rebel, right? Mm -hmm. Fighting against, rebelling against the occupier, right? Um, yeah. Going up against something, uh, a, a completely different style or methodology that he's used to. And I, I thought that was kind of an undercurrent of the whole thing. Like, this is how I fought. And what's brilliant about that is that, of course, this is what she does eventually with the, the other Cardassian in the show, Damar. Yeah. Oh, so, yeah. Yeah, it's good so, that you mentioned so, Damar. Because we really should mention Damar, because there he is delivering lines like uh, uh, reports from Tactical Sir. <laughs> yeah, it's his first episode, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, well, Sirak we get... wanted to talk about him, Damar, but yeah. I say right now, let's do we it today. <laughs> let's do it today. Not tomorrow. Not... Yeah. <laughs> Uh, but, but that's it, what she does for him at the end. She, you know, she goes and, and teaches Damar how to how to run a resistance, doesn't she, on Cardassia Prime? So it's not Dukat she does that for. In the mm -hmm. end, it's uh, it's Damar. Right, yeah. and so this was his first episode. Mm -hmm. uh, we are introduced to him. I don't didn't remember them actually mentioning his name, but they do in this episode. He does have mm -hmm. a name. I wasn't sure if it was just like. Cardassian, you know, lieutenant or whatever. Is but it, are we Lynn. talking about Casey Biggs here? Right. Yeah. Yeah, that was him. That was uh, that was his first episode, and his makeup looked a little different than we remember mm -hmm. it. But they probably just because he was maybe just going to be a one-off guy. But then when they needed a Cardassian again, they bring him back. They bring him back, and that's mm -hmm. how it works. And he really grew into the role, and mm -hmm. it's one of one of my favorite characters. But all Cardassians are. Uh, yeah. <laughs> what do you guys think of his first, his, his introduction? Oh, he's, well, he's got, I mean, it's hard to watch this episode now without knowing the, the, the and, and bearing in mind what happens that, you know, he ends right. up killing Zial as well as the other. So you've got this very tight, almost bottle show with these four characters and there's going to be all this future history. So I think it's one of those episodes that perhaps you watch at the time, you don't realize the significance it's going to have when you come back to it and go, it's the first time we meet this guy. And I, I'm watching it now and trying to watch it with those fresh eyes. You, you kind of go, oh, I can see why they go back to him. Because even though he's, he's just giving techno babble, there's, there's a kind of uh, uh, curl of the lip or a sparkle in the eye. Mm -hmm. And you can see why they went, oh, that was great. Let's bring him back. There was something mm -hmm. happening there. Um, but I'm sure nobody could have imagined what that character arc was going to be like. It's just an right. uh, incredible uh, way to go in, in three seasons. But I really, I, 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 I really like the performance just, just with that, you know, really quite background role. And, and of course, the trick he teaches the all is rubbish. You know, <laughs> Kira can see right through it. It's no, oh, yeah. that Cardassian trick. A yeah, trick. yeah, I've seen that. One. Yeah, <laughs> I've seen that one before, you know. <laughs> so um, I really like him and, uh, and uh, the role just gets better and better and better. The part gets better and better. 
Now, Sorox, since this was your first time watching this, Sorox watching all of this through the first time. This wow. is his first time. So it's really cool. Um, yeah. And, and I always kind of think of you in certain points of episodes. Um, the one where I thought of you this time was, did it feel to you that the episode was about to end and then there were still 10 or 15 minutes left? Like when, they, when they're working so hard to defeat the Klingons, they come up with this whole thing. And then the plan works. They defeat the Klingons. Happy ending. Uh, Dukat's going to tell the, his buddies over at uh, the consulate or whatever. And done. You know, you figure there's going to be like a minute left of like the post mortem stuff. And then you look, and there's still 13 minutes. Did did it feel like that was the end of the episode to you? Yeah, because I was thinking, what could they possibly get into again that would ha- that would could be solved within right. this short amount of time? So. So yeah, it felt like the end of the episode came early when they um, destroyed, you know, the, the freighter ship and were managed to do the whole switcheroo thing. Yeah. Um, but but then you know, then I also thought, you know, what, well, where is it going to go with like? I, I didn't know. I didn't know. I just thought this is the end. Yeah. Um, um, so I didn't really expect anything after that. I did. I did think that I liked the line that Ducat said when eventually it got to the point where um, Kira is adopting Zial, and he said something about it giving him a reason to live, mm-hmm. and it made me think of like how what kind of state of mind he's been in if he's been looking for a reason to live. Mm. That's yeah. really interesting. Yeah into a dark place because he's lost everything hasn't he i think what's really interesting about this decision to let zr live is possibly the single selfless thing that ducat does in his entire life and he just gets punished for it yeah he had to be convinced to do it too (laughs) he had to be convinced to do it he's convinced to do it and he he loses everything he loses his job his wife walks out. His his mother disowns him. Oh, I'd forgotten that nuance. So oh, his mother. Oh, yeah. Mama Ducat won't speak. She won't take my calls. You know, he gets thrown out. He's humiliated. He loses his job, and that's for the single altruistic thing that he's managed to do. Um, and uh, yeah, he that must have been a dark place. I think um, mm. that the, the character is taken to. It's really interesting what you're saying about. It feels like the episode was over. Because yeah, really another did. really noticeable thing is there isn't a kind of B plot. So you know you watch Deep Space Nine. There's usually kind of like a B plot yeah. where, like right. Jake and Nog are, are doing a prank, or uh, you know there's a there's a festival going on, um, or the wax on has arrived. There's usually like a sort of humorous. Um, one one correction theme. on this show when uh, Jake and Nog are in a plot, it's never the B plot. It's the A. Plot. That, that is true. Actually, I should. Uh, we, I, I, so it, we talked for forty five minutes about those three lines. <laughs> <laughs> Forgive yeah. me, I, I'm absolutely wrong. There. You're quite right. So I, I retract that statement completely. No, but you're right. There um, was there really there wasn't a B, B plot. Yeah. And, the, yeah. and I guess that's because the B plot is the ZL story. We're being, we're being asked to kind of refocus our attention on that. Yeah. So you've actually got a much more tightly knitted teleplay than, than you usually have. We're not, we're not nipping back to a dart match uh, or, or some, <laughs> something happening at Quarks right. or, uh, you know, um, it's all this really tight narrative happening between these four people. It's really mm-hmm. interesting. Um, but so much of the payoff comes later, I think. Yeah. Um, I'm sorry, but did anybody else kind of have a reasonable explanation for them why the uh, the bird of prey didn't fire on them in the beginning, like when they fired? Because well, I mean, it's you not, buy. Yeah, it's not honorable. I I bought it. Yeah, they're basically they a Klingon would be like, why would I? There there is no honor in destroying yeah. a basically defenseless freighter. You know, it's almost like more insulting to let them live knowing that they yeah. weren't worth your time, you know, and that's how, that's how Klingons think. So I thought that that did work for me. Okay. Know? Okay. Because, and they, that's and plus they had it. to do that because. Yes, <laughs> they, exactly. you know. Squash. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Otherwise the story goes a different way. Yeah. Yeah. You've lost one of your leads. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But yeah, that's how I read it as well. It was, uh, there's no honor in swatting flies. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm especially with Klingons. And, and really when, 
they write Klingons, the, the Klingon honor thing kind of goes in whatever direction the plot needs it to. Because yeah. sometimes <laughs> they'll say like, you know, there is no honor in killing a defenseless whatever. But then other times when they say to Worf, yeah. well, why would the Klingons fire on a defenseless ship? And he says, in battle, there is nothing more honorable than victory or something like that. So they can use <laughs> honor in any direction they want, you know, yeah, whatever yeah, the yeah. plot needs. It's like Garrick's duplicity, okay. isn't it? You know, it's uh, if we need him to be loyal to the Federation this week, then we'll have it, I think. Yeah. Right. <laughs> or the other way around next week. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I just thought that, uh, just to put a button on that, uh, the writing situation. I did find it mm. interesting and leave it to Deep Space Nine to kind of break the television episode mold of structure. You know, they basically had the end of an episode and then spent the final 10 or 12 minutes just doing kind of future exposition. Exactly. You know, yeah. and that's a really interesting way of creating this serialized show to where we're like, ooh. Mm. There's more to this story. We, we're getting like a bonus. And, and you're, you're probably right, Una, the way you put it is the B plot was just pretty much put at the end of the episode. Yeah. And it's all about it's all about flagging to you that Zial is going to be important from here mm -hmm. on, that this is a character that, that you're going to see again. This is a character you're going to want to invest in. Uh, this is a character that we're going to spend time with. Uh, and quite right, I think uh, mm -hmm. Zial ends up being one of the, the most interesting characters in the show to me. Uh, uh, really well set up. Uh, just a, such an interesting story behind her. Um, they missed a trick. The only thing I think they missed a trick is they they should have they should have had a relationship with Zial and Jake. Actually, I think the the ironies of the, right. the of Decat's daughter and the Emerstree's son would have been a really really interesting thing. I to thought explore. the same thing. It would have been great. Yeah. Sirak, how cool would it have been? You would have had silver mm. makeup all over your face. <laughs> <laughs> The first kissing scene and you're like, and then you have to come and get last looks every single time beforehand. I, I had a little, I mean, it was a brief thought, but is this the same Zial that played in the first one or was this a different actress? That was, this that is was the kind of same as in Indiscretion, yeah, but it's her last appearance, isn't it? Right, she, def yeah. she did look different, I thought too, but I know that she's in, that the same actress is the same for the first two, and then they have a, a mm. second one, and then they have a third one, I believe. Okay, but That's this right. is the same one from the one we saw before. Right. That's right. Because she yeah, just yeah. looked a little bit different to me. I don't know if she agree. looked older or something. Just older, I yeah. Yeah, yeah older. they changed the makeup. Um, maybe experimenting with how this sort of Bajoran Cardassian look is meant to be yeah, or something like that. before she looked so young. You're right, Strzok. Mm -hmm. when, when we picture that, that episode of her hugging her dad, she seemed like a little kid. Mm -hmm. And in this right. one, she seems like a young adult. She's clearly, what... yeah, got 17 or 18, isn't she, I think, mm -hmm. um, or meant to be. Um, mm -hmm. But it is the same, yeah. And then at the next one it is, is the next CL, time we see her, it's a different actress. And then a, a okay. third actress, yeah. But I did find myself, we only have a couple minutes left, but I did find mm -hmm. myself thinking the same thing um, because I'm almost watching these with fresh eyes and kind of like reevaluating things. And when I see that Kira's bringing home Zial, my first thought is she needs to be hanging out with Jake and Nog since Nog mm -hmm. is off on the planet on Earth. You know, it, it's a perfect storyline. I mean, even if they don't get romantically involved, which would be a natural thing, uh, a natural storytelling thing, that, you know, Jake has yeah. somebody to play off of and so does she and it's this natural thing back and forth and there's Kira and Captain Sisko talking, there's, you know, their respective mm -hmm. children. Yeah. So to speak. Yeah, I actually yeah. thought the same thing. I thought that that would be the natural progression. Basically, mm -hmm. Kira maybe coming back with Zial and saying, Hey Jake, show her around, show her, you yeah. know. <laughs> totally. Show her show her where all the kids go and hang out, you know? Yeah. Uh, yeah. So so it would seem natural to me, yes. And also um, irritate Cisco just enough to make it really interesting. <laughs> right, exactly because that. that's Ducat's <laughs> daughter. Oh, right. Oh. <laughs> exactly that. And exactly. he would try, and, and he would have the same kind of prejudices he had with the Dabo girl, where he's like, "Who are you dating?" But then he ends up Who? meeting her <laughs> and realizing she's yeah. great. Oh. Who did you say her father was? I'm not sure about this. <laughs> no, Jake, don't do that. Uh, missed opportunity. And they would both have their reservations. That would be... Yeah. 
And Ducat's going, who did you say his father was? And yeah. <laughs> yeah, he'd be like, he'd be exactly. like, now y'all, I don't want you hanging out with that Cisco boy. These federation officers, they can't be trusted. Yeah. <laughs> you could literally cut in between the two of them both exactly saying the that. same thing to Ducat, yeah. right? <laughs> who did you say? Who did you say? <laughs> yeah, that would have been a great, they missed that opportunity, but. Yeah, that would have been wow. awful. That's the next fan fiction book right there. Oh, easily. That's I'm sure that's been big done. Money. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> so uh, we're just about out of time here. Uh, but Una, this has been really great. Uh, we really enjoyed having you. And thank you so much for taking the time all the way out in the UK where it's like three in the morning or something. And oh, snowing. it's not quite that bad. <laughs> it's, it's 10 o'clock at night now. So uh, I'm ready for a gin and tonic. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah, but thank you so much for joining us. Everybody, uh, oh, we forgot to mention the most important thing. Uh, we talked about all of your other books, but, oh, yes. <laughs> right, we got so sidetracked so many times. Uh, you wrote the autobiography of Catherine Janeway, and it's narrated by Kate Mulgrew. That's such an incredible thing. Can you tell us about it a little bit? It's a really fun project. So uh, Titan Books have been doing these series of autobiographies they've done uh, one of Kirk, one of Picard. And the kind of conceit is that, uh, you know, it's, it's the character telling the, the story of their life. Uh, so it's in first person, you know, I, I was born, you know, at this mm -hmm. date or whatever. Uh, so the conceit is that kind of I interview Janeway and get the story of her life. And uh, obviously I wrote the book. Um, yes, so that came out um, last year. Uh, and, it, you know, it's it part of the Voyager anniversary celebrations. And then we were just... In a couple of days, Kate Mulgrew uh, has, has done an audio reading of it. That's going to be released in a couple of days. So if you want to hear Kate Mulgrew reading the autobiography of Catherine Janeway, then uh, hop over to Audible or wow. your preferred supplier and, and find that. So, uh, yeah, thanks for mentioning that. I think we're so Absolutely. DS9 focused. We nearly yeah. forgot about Voyager, didn't we? But that's... Um, uh, we will definitely project. include the link to that in the description box below. So just make mm -hmm. sure that I have it and we will give it to everybody and everybody, you've got to check this out. And we probably don't have to tell them that. They're probably already clicking on the link and buying it. Uh, it sounds like a really awesome so. thing. And people are going to love it. So definitely check the so. description box below. We will include the link. And be sure to check that out. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And thank you very I, much for having me. That was really good absolutely. fun. <laughs> oh, it was a pleasure. It's an absolute pleasure. Also, I wanted to offer Ryan services if you need Picard's voiceover for <laughs> yeah. one of your books. Yeah, well, Patrick Stewart <laughs> is, is still around and he lives in the same country as her. So oh, maybe, oh. I mean, I'll be a backup. Just in, case, just in case he's not available. It's a busy Ryan does a hell of a Picard. I'll do the, wow. uh, I'll do the Chief O'Brien. Just kidding. I don't, oh, I don't good. think I can do him. No, I, I always love hearing Americans do uh, British accents. <laughs> it probably sounds terrible, doesn't it? <laughs> it's always interesting. And, and his warp. His warp is good if you do if you do something with that. Okay, with my warp. <laughs> I'll just give you. Warp, I'll just give you a taste of Picard. Beverly. Okay. Oh, that's you know, that was uncanny. If, my, if I'd had my <laughs> eyes <word>. shut, <laughs> I would have thought he was in the room. <laughs> right. Give me a sentence. It'll be less canny. Or wait, more canny. Oh, I don't know how that works. That works. Uh, a, a, a sentence. Oh, come on. I got, you make oh, me write dialogue. No. You've got to pay me to write dialogue. <laughs> uh, anyway, uh, but thank you so much, Una. It's been a pleasure. We do hope to see you again really sometime uh, for any kind of expertise that we might need that's Deep Space Nine related or otherwise. Uh, but My we pleasure. really appreciate your time. Thank you very much. Really enjoyed it. Thank you, Dr. guys. Dr. Una McCormack. That's right. right? That's, That's right. right. That's the one. <laughs> Thank you so All much. Right. And Thank everybody you. at home, be sure to check the description box below. Be sure to comment below. Uh, and be sure to be nice to each other. What the hell, right? Sounds like the right thing to do. And uh, we'll see you next time. Stick around. The free-for-all is next. Uh, very special thanks to... Carmen Shamwell, PJ Thomas, PJ, TJ Jackson Bay. Bay. <laughs> I know Sir, yeah, there it is. Bay. I knew Ciroc was waiting. Bay. Yvette Blackman, Homer Frizzell, Eve England out in Wales, not in England. Kind of a misnomer there. Dr. Anne Marie Siegel, Dr. Susan B. Gruner, Titus Muller, Tim Baum, Robert Weisberg, and Darlene Marie. Darlene Marie. Um, stick around for the free for all. We'll be right back. Always remember the seventh rule. Thank <laughs> you.
Hello and welcome back to the Seventh Rule with All Star Sirak Lofton. Hello, hello, host Ryan T. Husk. And we are joined by Timothy Baum. Yeah. Hey Tim. A.T. Carr, yeah. out in Indiana. Yeah. And we have also Carly. Yeah. We have Homer Freezy somewhere in New Yeezy. Oh, Freezy! Yeah. Freezy! Yeah. We have Melissa Longo classing up to join as usual. Yeah. We have Sue Gruner. The most skippy dresser ever. Whoop, whoop, whoop. <laughs> and we have Natasha's iPad joining us. <laughs> Natasha <laughs> Louise. Hey, iPad. Let's see my iPad. <laughs> and we have Yvette Blackman Tom. Hello. Yeah. <laughs> and Marie Siegel. Yay. Marie. And we have Skill of the Cookie Monster. <laughs> and everybody, welcome. You, mi you missed one more. Yeah, there it is. Darlena Blender. Woohoo! Woo Woo right. I like that little and dance. I'm TJ out from the great state of Missouri or Missouri or either pronunciation is fine. <laughs> very nice. Very good. All right. <clears throat> and Marie so, Siegel. So everybody, before uh, before we hit record, everybody, uh, Skillet over here really <laughs> kind of threw us off base. She started talking about cookies, so now it's all any of us can think about is cookies. So here's the question of the day. This is going to be a big one. It's a little less Star Trek related than some may or may not be. Four options. Cookies, cake, chips, or crackers. What do you like best? I know, <laughs> I know. We asked it's like apples words. and oranges in here. <laughs> no, that's next week. <laughs> uh, by chips, do you mean French fries or? Oh, that would make it even tougher. No, no, no cri uh, crisps, as the Brits call them. Like we have to pick one. Yes, one of the four. What What do you like best? We'll start with Tim because Tim knows. He's out in an alley somewhere. <laughs> um, actually, no, that's uh, Jen Hay, South Korea, behind me. Uh, no, I'm a, oh, wow. um, I'm a crisp or a chip guy. Constantly. Sour cream, barbecue, mm. dill pickle. You like the jalapeno chips? Yes. Mm. But, yep. So I'm a chip Ryan, guy. <laughs> Ryan is seriously I know, so. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, well, Katie, uh, what do you think? Chips, crackers, cookies, cake? What's your uh, go-to? crackers just they're easy and i don't want to say they're more healthier but they are <laughs> depending <laughs> on which one you get <laughs> wheat thins wheat yeah thins. yeah they always have and what i like about those is that they have reduced fat same with like fritz crackers so they're much more you know you can and you can pair them like with an apple or something mm. just to keep them more healthier i mean i do like cake but my mother makes a, a really good cake. I was wondering like when I was usually coming. Usually she, yeah. she does them, but I'll go with crackers. Cake definitely sidetracks us pretty pretty well, heavily. Well, I'm kind of like, what are Fig Newton? It's a cookie. It's not. Oh, it's, no, it's a not cookie. a cookie. It's not, it's not a, a cookie. cookie. It's a Newton. Come on. <laughs> it's a Newton. <laughs> it's a it's, Newton. It's, cookie, it's not an option. <laughs> it's, a <Newton. laughs> it's not an option. Well, uh, Carly, what do you think? What's your favorite? Uh oh, we can't hear you anymore. We that lost one, you. Did it not work? No, now we there hear you. There we are. Um, chips usually. Do you have a favorite kind? Sour cream and cheddar, or the mm. sour cream and cheddar lays. Nice. Yeah, I could demolish a bag of those. So. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Yeah. Uh, is that Ruffles? I think it might be. Oh God, those are so good. I think they make other ones like it, but the Ruffles are usually what they have. So mm -hmm. it's it's kind of like an addiction almost. <laughs> so, <laughs> it's not <Yeah>. healthy. <laughs> uh, 
The, the oh, dill cheers. pickle lays are to die for. <laughs> yeah. They oh, taste yeah. just like oh, dill pickles. Yeah. Uh, Homer Freezy's okay. out somewhere in New Yeezy, I think is what New TJ Yeezy. said. <laughs> yes. That's pig Latin. Yeah, so, Ryan, <laughs> this was the easiest question yet. Thank you. Uh, I like, prefer of all those choices, salt and vinegar potato chips. Oh, yeah. Mm. Wise. Yeah. The wise uh, not necessarily wise. I'm not oh. sure which one it is. I think Cape Cod makes some. Oh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> and those are quite nice. Oh, yeah. Yep. Now, where they they, they the, the, the mouth, mouth like little... Yeah, your yeah. mouth is like that. Yeah. <laughs> I know, I know. And I can't stop. I'll just keep going. That doesn't matter. <laughs> and tomorrow, we'll drink so water it later. Hurts here after a while. <laughs> yeah, it hurts after a while. Yeah. 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 Uh, yeah. Ooh, it's worth more. it. <laughs> You know, the best more. thing about this is watching people's reaction when somebody says something good. And this one was, was definitely Yvette was the one that reacted to it. She went, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's good taste. Uh, yeah. yeah. Man. Also, Homer, I love your outfit. Oh, thank you. I went with a black turtleneck. Oh. I saw it earlier wow. today, and I thought it was a good look. I didn't Did we see section it? 31. I didn't, <laughs> yeah. I didn't do the Section 31 badge. Sorry. Mr. Poole. You look Sorry. like you're about to give a TED talk. Oh. <laughs> Here we have a man, a Cardassian, right. who is on the cusp of regaining what he lost. And you actually mentioned in the live chat, in the live chat of our video that you'd be wearing a black turtleneck in honor of Duncan Regeer, right? I, yes, mm. I did. Next time I might wear a green one so you can't see the shirt. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> Stay tuned for that. Not as hot as Stay tuned. <laughs> That's right. Thanks We're gonna one up back. Duncan. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Melissa, this is it. This is the moment where you answer this tough question. <laughs> yeah, so this is to snack on. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> yeah. I mean, different different qualifiers. For dinner. For dinner. No, it's for <laughs> breakfast. <laughs> it's your early morning breakfast. That's what we're looking for. Oh. Hmm. No. <laughs> just, just a snack. Just a snack. Just a snack. That's not well, cake, then. That's not cake, then. Well, right. There are no wrong <laughs> answers. <laughs> no, it's, <laughs> it's your it's preference amongst those four. <laughs> Huh? You decide when. Thank you a snack for me. How about this? What would you like to eat right now out of those four? <laughs> right now. That's good, yeah. Well, I just had potato chips, so. <laughs> That's it. Have some That's more. <laughs> what, what kind? Salt and vinegar. Can't stop. I need to follow it with cake. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> I love her. Two answers. Two answers. You get two answers then. No yeah. wrong answers. Um, I would have to say my favorite. I'm going to go with Carly's answer as the favorite flavor. Nice. Although there are a lot of seconds, close seconds, so oh, too many to, to name. And then the cake, <laughs> of course, hot lava. Mm. Mm. Yeah, I remember mm. that episode. <laughs> <laughs> that episode killed us. <laughs> Don't bring that back. Hot lava. <laughs> All right. We need uh we need Eve here. <laughs> right, right. 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 <laughs> <laughs> By the way, feel better soon, Eve. She's feeling a bit under the weather, so we all wish her nothing but the best. And uh she got to enjoy some snow, so Maybe that cheered her up. I got someone sent her cookies, which looked delicious. Uh-oh. Were they yeah. super hard? <laughs> Steve. Yeah, oh, before we were, re we were recording, we were talking about hard cookies. That's why I realized that yeah. anybody watching this is not going to get that reference. They're not going to get that at all. <laughs> uh, well, Dr. Sue, Dr. Sue V. Gruner, PhD, uh, what's your favorite? And... and is it going to have mayonnaise in it? 
No. I'm sending you guys mayonnaise cake. <laughs> You'll never think that again. I've had it before. It's pretty good. It's it's awesome. And but we're not talking about that's not a mayonnaise. That's not my no. favorite thing. If I'm gonna go for it, need something fattening, which all of those things fall into the category, which I rarely do. I'm gonna go for the organic, simply white cheddar Cheetos cheese puffs. Ooh, Ooh. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, but uh, yes. on rare occasion, and they are so addicting. But that's yes. oh my god, I have to, yes. I have to excuse myself. I agree. <laughs> I have to excuse Is Ciroc wearing a black <laughs> turtleneck too? Um, I am wearing a black turtleneck. Oh. <laughs> oh my god! What are the chances? Um, oh my I, god. I wanna, I want to check in with Dr. Sue. Dr. Sue, is something going on with your eyebrows? No. Does it look like it? They look, well, it looks oh, like there are extra a, eyebrows on you. I was playing around with the settings the other yeah. day, and I gave myself a goatee. Can you see that? <laughs> no, I only see the eyebrows. Wait, wait, hang on a second. Wait, wait, Here it is. Oh, yeah, amber. yeah. Ooh. Oh. 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 Holy shit. Tito Puffs White Party Cheddar. Party at Ciroc. Oh. Those are the ones. Oh. Those are so bad. <laughs> Those These are, are so ridiculous, bad. guys. Oh, yeah. Those were not an it. option. Uh, <laughs> seriously, guys. Seriously. I need oh, these. They're <laughs> ridiculous. They're Real cheese. All right. <laughs> I don't know. They're, they're ridiculous. They're only <laughs> three ninety nine dollars a bag. <laughs> I, I don't know. Whatever. Publicity. Publicity. <laughs> Where'd you get it's them? Worth up there. I'm curious. I get them at the Ralphs here, and I, I keep the steady oh. supply. If I don't have those, <laughs> if I don't have these exact ones, I use the the Doritos. Also, are good. The same version. Doritos of puffs. Doritos. No, the simply, simply Doritos. Yeah. Oh, Doritos puffs sounds good. Mm. Oh, yeah. I, I gotta look at the store. I don't see these things. Okay. You, yeah. Maybe it's a Let's West Coast. Go put a patent on that. They're there. Well, uh, oh, you're right on the nose there, Dr. Sue. That's that's exactly what I like to partake. Oh, and, and Sue, by the way, I did want to ask, what's up with that ring? It looks really cool on your right hand, or maybe it's it's the red one. Yeah. Oh, that's My dad pretty. My gave this to me when I was nine years old. Wow, it looks great. And I've been wearing it since I was nine years old. It's a oh. fake ruby ring, but I <laughs> never take it off. Oh, thanks for asking. I'm surprised you noticed that. It's bright red. It's pretty. Yeah. So TJ, this is a tough act to follow. Those cheese puffs look pretty good. <laughs> oh, dude. Props. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. I'm going to break the mold. Yes. Uh -oh. Sounds like cake. I want, I'm thinking cookies. I want a grilled cheese sandwich. <laughs> yeah. No, no. Yes, no. yes. No. Come on. What were the options again? No. Cake, cookies, crackers, and chips. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. 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 Some, Always one guy. Some grilled cheese potato <laughs> chips or something. <laughs> or crackers. <laughs> oh. Yeah, grilled cheese yeah. flavored yeah. potato chips. Someone should get on Okay, okay. so he's yeah. saying crackers with stuff on them. Exactly. Oh, okay. <laughs> That's the only way to eat crackers. With stuff on yeah. It. Right. yeah. You gotta have cheese. Cheese. Sharp cheese. cheddar. Cheese. Seriously, mm, yeah. sharp cheddar. That's even better. Oh, yes. Seriously. Yeah, Seriously, just get the, uh, the cracker cuts. Yes. I could go to town on that. Good now, for me. <laughs> now, just out of curiosity, what kind of grilled cheese sandwich are we talking about here? Oh. Like, oh. what kind of cheese? What kind of bread? A shiver. <laughs> uh, why we gotta get all specific? That's a whole other question, Ryan. That's a different question now. A whole different question. There's only one way to make grilled cheese. No, that's not true. <laughs> no, no. American white bread. Oh, maybe throw some bacon oh. on there, but by God, bacon. American cheese what? isn't even cheese. That's not even cheese. <laughs> cheese. It's orange. Stop. It's baking. <laughs> oh, maple syrup. Tim. <laughs> All right, that'll have to be I'm another sorry, day then. Yeah, I'm sorry. We're not, <laughs> another day. We're gonna do. Yeah, we're gonna do grilled cheese another day because there's a lot of options oh, there. Oh yeah. And it'll give Tim a chance to find out that there are other options. <laughs> 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 Actually, our cheese. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> 
get him to use with the actual cheese. cheese with actual cheese. <laughs> with actual cheese. No, if if it's got to be chips though, um, then I say ruffles usually are pretty good, and I like the sour cream and onion. Yeah, um, I ran across. I only saw it once, and I got them, but I haven't seen them again. But there was like a flaming hot ruffles, mm-hmm. and they were better than other flaming hot chips that I've had. So if I could run up on those again, I would probably grab them. <laughs> <laughs> he said, "Run up on, them. <laughs> run up on." Them. <laughs> all right, skillet. <laughs> This is first this is all, the one. Sorry. First Uh-oh. of all, uh oh, here we go. Let, let a airing of grievances. Uh-oh. Cake Uh-oh. is a snack. I don't care. Thank you. Like argue, Thank argue you. with argue with your mama about it. Cake Thank is a you. snack, okay? Because <laughs> when I made those three cakes, the pumpkin cake, the pumpkin rum cake, the banana rum cake, and the chocolate whiskey cake, that was my snack morning, noon, and night. Oh yo, it's a thing. Like it was, it was just, like a I would just get a knife, <laughs> a little slice here, chips. Yeah, little slice a little there. slice there. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. So first of all, <laughs> cake is a snack. So <laughs> if I'm going to choose between cake the is four, <laughs> cake is if I'm thing. choosing between the four, it is cake. <laughs> it's period. eternally a snack. <laughs> it is eternally. Well, what's your favorite kind meal. of cake then? <laughs> um, I really do love like liquor infused cakes. I mean, let's just be completely transparent. I like liquor infused anything. Um, but uh, yeah, I really like a good rum cake. Um, like being in Jamaica was like amazing because it's like they have a couple brands down there and they're everywhere. But yeah, I do love a good rum cake. I do love a good, I really, and, and then like, I like cakes that are really um, moist and flavorful. So I like the cakes where you have to kind of like pour a glaze over after you finish baking it, whether that be um, rum and sugar and butter, or if it's just like the sugar butter mixture with flavoring and you pour it over and it kind of like goes into the cake. I do like my cakes to be more um, uh, moist rather than like, I guess, cakey and dry, but yeah. But um, mm-hmm. second place would be, don't kill me, y'all. Like, I really, I don't need the slander today. Like, I've been folding laundry all day. I'm tired. I don't Ooh, need it. What is this going to be, then? Plain Uts chips. No, <laughs> no ruffles. Plain Uts chips. Uts. That's my favorite type of potato chip. What's Uts? It's a chip. Are you kidding me? <laughs> it's a chip. Thanks. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> it's a it's a brand of potato chips. It's a chip that what? shouldn't be plain. <laughs> Maybe it's an East Coast thing. They only oh have pretzels. <laughs> I, I literally just said I don't Never need heard it. Of Oops. Uh, Oops. No, you what? no no not U-T-Z. Uh, U-T-Z. 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 I think yeah, it's a New York thing. Is that a New York? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm in DC. Same, yeah. same, same, yeah. same. Yeah. But they have I, saw them I was just there. I saw them. They were there. But they, it's a, they have oh, a yeah. great, their, their yeah. whole brand is great. Every flavor is yeah, they, they even have the crab chips over here. Okay. Crab okay. chips are just great. Yeah, the crab chips are the best. Have Tito's. Crab. So. Hey, do you guys know uh, who else in Star Trek likes liquor infused things? O'Brien. Demar? That's right, O'Brien. <laughs> O'Brien? He, had, he infused oh, his gum uh, with oh, scotch. Oh, that's right. Scotch. Good answer, uh, Anne Marie. Good answer. Yeah. <laughs> All right, this is it, Natasha. Is the Rock eating those that popcorn? Well, yeah, he's eating those cheese puffs. <laughs> <laughs> if I was, you would see a whole bunch of crumbs. Okay. <laughs> you would see a lot of crumbs. No, I'm having pistachios, but no. oh, okay, that's oh. safe. That's safe. You can't those have addic- those. That's addictive. That oh, that's those. that's the worst. Pistachios. Leave all that. All that cheap chip stuff all in the teeth. You gotta bring oh, yeah. teeth or something. I, um, okay, so I really, I really should love the cake and cookies because I need the weight. But mm. chips are my favorite, and right now, <laughs> chips and salsa give it to me all day long, three meals a day. That's fine. <laughs> but right now, my favorite new chips are the Doritos Flamin' Hot Lemon chips. Mm, my gosh! Mm. So, Whoa! I eat them three times. That's the second flaming hot reference on this. Yeah. <laughs> Do you ever dip the flaming hot in salsa just to really make your hair stand up? <laughs> no, because I don't have any, but if I had them, maybe I would. But I do eat my popcorn with jalapenos. So, ooh. There's that. It's really now, good. Try it. For sometime. everybody who said chips, 
do you do the finger licks? Do you do do, oh, do, yeah. do you lick off the fingers yeah, when you when they're finally? Sure. Oh, when I'm done. Yeah. Oh yeah. The best was Yvette going. Of course. Like, why would you even? Ask, why would you even ask that? Why you just leave it there? I don't understand the question. You can go wash your hands if you. No. Why? You're wasting stuff. You don't waste. Why? 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 You gotta get that. Get that extra. Right. Right. That's, I don't know where you grew up. We don't waste food. Come on, you don't <laughs> wasteful. <laughs> don't waste food. What's wrong with you? Uh, Wait a minute. When you get when you get to the very bottom of the paper chip bag, you have to like really make the edge really sharp so you can like yeah, get yeah. the little chips, you know, like that. Yeah, you can't waste that at the bottom. Every last bit. Yeah, you gotta flick the bottom. You gotta flick it a few times to get it yeah, all. Right. Right. Yeah, Darlena and Sharak already got their bags just sitting right there. <laughs> ready. Uh, Darlena, what do you think? What's your favorite? Oh, cake, okay, definitely. Show that empathy. I, I was never really about cookies um, because cookies are addictive. You can just sit there and end up eating the whole bag. But I know with cake, I can better control myself. Like I'll have a slice and then a, a little smaller slice and then that'll be it for me, you know, particularly since I got these two veneers and they cost a lot of money. So I don't want to like buy <laughs> <laughs> the cookies. <laughs> but vanilla cake, like I, I don't like all this fancy cake. Like cake to me just needs to be the cake and the simple icing and that's it. I don't like stuff all in the cake, you know, liquor and everything like that. I don't like a whole lot of decoration on the frosting. You know, I just like everything kind of simple. I'm simple when it comes to cake, you know, mm -hmm. simple chocolates. You know, you go to these restaurants, can I have a piece of chocolate cake? Do you have chocolate? Well, we have this, this, this. It's like 20 different names for a chocolate yeah. cake. <laughs> can you just give me a piece of chocolate cake, please? Like regular? I don't want anything from five countries away. You know, it's like all these different fancy names for a chocolate cake. So, but yeah, I, I, I love cake. I'm, I'm, I, I'll eat a little bit and then I'll stop. But I know if I have cookies and chips, I'll just sit there and keep eating and eating. So I, I stay away from as much as I can. But if I do have chips, I like the sour cream and on, onion muffle. It's like it's like four for the ruffles. So yeah. one. Who's the I'll pick those out of a bag. I also want to know one of these days because of what Natasha said, like what people put on their popcorn, because that's it's pretty interesting. Jalapenos on popcorn. That's something I might yeah. try. I used to I used to manage a movie theater and someone introduced it to me because she was pregnant at the time. I was like, that is so disgusting. And I tried it. <laughs> like, and now I've been addicted to it for the last almost 15 years now. Introduced it to my family, and now every time my family goes to movie theater, they ask for the jalapenos. So they can is it like the jalapenos from like the jalapenos and nacho from the nachos? For the, for the, yeah, oh, that's yeah. a good idea. Yeah, wow. yeah, it's that, it's that yeah. kind of. Help. I have a suggestion too for popcorn for anybody who's who's interested. If you take <laughs> olive oil and sprinkle it on top of your popcorn, it'll taste like butter, mm -hmm. like melted butter. Mm -hmm. If you put olive yeah. oil and salt. Uh, uh. No, that sounds like a little too. too healthy. Yeah, that's not the same. <laughs> Come on. It, it, it really works. Really, really works. <laughs> yeah. Well, as long as we're like, going with like it, wet. try Parmesan cheese on it. I was going to say. So yes. Yes. That's a big win. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And that'll taste just like Parmesan cheese. And popcorn. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> and popcorn. Uh, yep. All right, Yvette. This is it. This is the mm. big moment. Cookies, I like chips. It all. I like it all. <laughs> all right. I like it all. But I like cake for breakfast. Cake is for breakfast. Mm -hmm. Yeah, cake is good for breakfast. I like cake, cake and coffee. Um, yes. I don't like like Darlene. I don't like too many different types of cake. My favorite cake is coconut cake. I oh. hope I get that mm. for my birthday, um, and it usually has to be <laughs> made. So you know, I usually get an auntie or somebody to make it for me. <laughs> nice. Uh, <laughs> I'm particular I have, I have, about my cake. I can cakes. make it for you. I can make one for you. Oh, don't worry. You in DC, so you know I'll come down there and get it. <laughs> okay, just I was just there. I just dropped off a kid, so I can make you careful, careful, careful what no you ask for. Yeah. I'll be down no, I can make you coconut cake. cake with no liquor and anything crazy. Just no, no, the liquor's fine. Liquor's fine. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm, I'm good with the liquor. That's fine. But yeah, uh, but barbecue uts. 
um, chips are my favorite. Yeah, so What's good. Uts? Oh. Uts. No, I'm just kidding. We, I'm just kidding. <laughs> we just went through this, right? Oh, I'm oh, like, yeah. really? <laughs> yeah, those oh, are my favorite. God. But I don't, I, don't usually, best, I don't usually turn down a chip, so it doesn't matter, really. <laughs> but those are my favorites. Mm. And Girl Scout cookies are good, too. Love a Girl Scout cookie. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Special appearance. Which ones? <laughs> Which ones? Mm-hmm. Rose. The butter. You know. Butter. Okay. Girl butter Scouts. Cookie. Special guest star. <laughs> <laughs> Not wait for me to answer, are you? Yeah, I'm waiting. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. <laughs> There's your coffee. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> um, tree foils. <laughs> <laughs> tree, tr- well, yeah. so tree foils are the ones that were here. So those are the ones that I like now, but it doesn't matter. I'll eat them all. Nice. Good customer. Peanut butter. <laughs> well, I'm a Girl Scout mom. Uh, I have three girls that were Girl Scouts, so. Nice. I've been eating those things for like 10 years, so. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, Anne Marie. Oh, just plain crackers. Yeah. Like saltine? That, that that's it? Seriously, we waited all this time. <laughs> plain crackers? Finally. Or with cheese. With American cheese on it. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's not cheese. No, no, no. With like <laughs> cheese. <laughs> uh, Anne Marie, like, are we talking like just like saltines or like um, what are we? Like, or like Ritz, those cars weekends? crackers with cheese on them? Yeah. Cars? Uh, yeah, yep. that might be an East Coast thing brand. too. There's, oh no, no, we know those. We have the black those. box. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Or in the good. black box, like the, yeah. the circle ones. Yeah. 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 Or like, I you always like say the high I class ones. Company. Those are good. Those are really good. <laughs> well, no, I used to love saltines, but then I got allergic to peanuts, and they're made in a factory that like um, makes peanut uses yeah. peanuts. So I break out in highs if I eat them. So no more saltines. No more saltines. Oh, I guess that was less funny. I would like eat the boxes. (laughs) I guess that was less funny. (laughs) Thanks, Brian. (laughs) Shut up, Homer. (laughs) This is this is honestly new for me. I didn't know people actually ate saltines on purpose when they weren't sick. This is honestly. They're actually really good. They're actually really good. Yeah. I love them really salty. Love saltines. But I'm a salt person over sweet. Mm -hmm. I like them when I'm sick. Like they, oh yeah, because it's the only yeah. thing I've eaten in days, but <laughs> what like episode? I didn't know that like, okay, I, know. I learned something new every day. Oh my gosh. My well, grandma used to make like oyster dressing with saltines and oysters. So uh, delicious. Thanks, Kate. Ciroc, do you love crackers too or what? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm more the chip guy. guy. You're more of a yeah. chip. Oh yeah, right. We should have known. That. Guy, right. we, need yeah. a, we need an endorsement deal after this. Yeah. <laughs> it's a uh, puff a chip. Rule brought to you by <laughs> Cheetos White Cheddar Puffs. <laughs> there nice. you go. Come today. So <laughs> three ninety nine. <laughs> so you're a uh, cheese puffs, chips, and pistachios kind of guy. I'm a, yeah, I like to snack a lot. I'm kind of a little, like, I have these snacks all around. I do um, ice creams. I don't really do cakes that much because, for me, cake is like a, a celebration type of food. So I only really eat cakes for, like, birthdays or some kind of event that I'm at or something we're celebrating. I, I don't really go out and just get a cake and say, I'm getting a cake, <laughs> unless, it's a, unless it's a holiday or yeah. a celebration. You should try it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I should. I should, try it. <laughs> I should try it more. Um, but I also like um, one of the things that's not on there is um, ban- banana, banana pudding, and bananas, all banana like puddings and stuff like that. I'm really big on those. Yeah. Cool. Ryan. What about you, Ryan? We're just going into all kinds of desserts and everything and pistachios. <laughs> you know what else? You know what the one thing I get like legitimately addicted to so i i can't buy it i just because i can't stop is uh sunflower seeds mm. like oh, the, yes. the, the unshelled okay. sunflowers the ones that actually have the shell on them yeah, yeah. can't Often, like yes my, it's my embarrassing <laughs> i'm the same way with pistachios and right that's the other one right? <laughs> <laughs> me over here right i'm like pistachio, that's what made yeah. me think of it right it's the, sh- it's the it's the shell thing it's it's the you get into the a shell. rhythm yeah. and the salty yeah. oh that's it <laughs> yeah. Yeah. 
as long as you're drinking enough water, it should be fine. Because you're mm. actually put you're actually putting in work to you are get working. to the, <laughs> the seed. It's so it's like no, you're burning calories as because you, are you one of the ones that like manually does it with your fingers or do you do it in your mouth? Yeah. Mouth. I mouth. get I get a handful, oh, throw them in my mouth, and then one by one just spit yeah. the cells out. Ah. You're burning oh, wow. That's a lot of work. Dude, you're doing good work. I'm pro. That's a lot of work. That's a lot of work. You're giving man. yourself a workout. Whoa. As long again, as long as you stay hydrated <laughs> while you do it, you should be fine. Uh, yeah. I, I say stretches. I say I say scratch the itch, Ryan. Don't don't scratch it. <laughs> Where did that come from? What was that? Uh yeah, but besides that, I think definitely salty over sweet for me. I mean, I like cake and I love like freshly baked snickerdoodles. Um, but I feel like the thing that is more addictive to me are just like chips and crackers. Mm -hmm. And and yes, Katie, uh, Ciroc is the big <laughs> coffee cake guy. We remember from last I time. Love yes, I remember that cake. too. So yeah. good. Coffee cake is a whole nother department now. <laughs> that you can have. For he doesn't need a celebration that's for that cake. <laughs> no celebration <laughs> for that cake, right? No, that's, a, that's just, just a breakfast event. Well, it's, 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 like it's made so bread. differently. It's mm -hmm. made so differently. Oh. They make the cake lighter, so it's like, I guess you feel like you're a little bit more, you know, it's not like a guilty, like a dense pound cake. Where it's right. like you have a slice and it's like, oh Lord Jesus. And it's yeah. like, yeah, coffee cake is just <laughs> <laughs> you really know. Seriously, coffee it cake is. is just a little bit lighter. Yeah. And yeah. so you don't feel and it's like so oh, easy. Yeah. yeah. And it's so easy to bake. I mean, that was the first thing I ever learned to yeah. bake was coffee cake. Yeah. And I now I can just that. do it without the recipe. It's just, <gasps> yeah. I should do that. Yeah, coffee cake. <laughs> Ciroc, have you um, ever had freshly baked coffee cake? Yeah, and then freshly baked banana nut bread. Those are my favorite uh, breakfast uh, uh, coffee, coffee things. Yeah. <laughs> yep. You're slaying these guys. <laughs> That's good stuff. That's good stuff. Uh, right there. Good right. stuff. Yeah, after all this, I'm going to have to get a replicator so I can <laughs> right? have the things that I want. I'm going to the grocery store. <laughs> well, I know what everybody's doing after we're done here. Everybody's going yeah. to the fridge. Yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah. Or the grocery store or something. I'm going to your house to have those Cheetos. Yeah. Right? <laughs> I got to go get a bunch of bananas so they can be ripe in the next five days so I can make banana nut bread. Ooh, uh, yum. Mm -hmm. <laughs> one, of the, one of the things I'm addicted oh to, and I, and I have it every night before I go to bed, is uh, honey bun with peanut butter. Huh. I have it that's, once a day. That's wild. That's honestly wild. Mm -hmm. You get that's the salty and the sweet, butter. and yeah. And then you I, add the peanut butter. Yeah. Well, actually, sweet. depending on what time of the night, I get a great big spoonful of peanut butter, put it in my mouth, and then eat the honey bun. <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's interesting. That's like, is it the honey bun from like the corner store, like the like the host? Right, that's, the that's exactly what I was thinking. Is like, that, what, the, what that the, the bodega that one? Lady, yeah, Katie Linda. <laughs> is that the one from the bodega? Yes, what, it's, which uh, one are you talking about? Edmonds. The hostess honey bun. No hostess. Yeah, yeah the, mm, like no, the like the ninety like the fifty cent joint. The ninety nine cent joint. Is it the jumbo honey bun? Right, the jumbo one. That's what I'm thinking about. What the hell is the medium one? It's the medium one. So medium. Okay, all right, yeah. Now that jumbo one will last to the 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 nuclear age. Yeah. <laughs> it's like a Twinkie. <laughs> I can't I can't tell you how many times a honey bun has quite literally saved me from saved starvation when I lived in New York City. Because <laughs> right. they're so they're only fifty cents. You right. hop into the bodega, you get one, and it's like oh okay, and they're huge. I mean, oh. they're like, yeah, that's like like, cinnamon they're like a sandwich. That's like if you ever go to like to the Cinnabon com company, and they're I, they're like this big. So I always yeah. get the mini ones. I don't know these things. Yeah, I, thank God. I'm, I'm not the only one that doesn't know what these are. I've never even heard oh. of them. I thought it was a pet name. Oh, my God. So you live so you on know, the top of, this, top of the road. So you know when you go to the corners or – okay, let's, excuse me. When you go oh, wait, to the 7 Wait, hang on. He, uh, Tim's oh, going to hold there it There we go. Uh, ah, yes. Uh, let's see that. Ooh. Yep, there it is. And that's honey a honey bun. bun. Oh, that's the yep. medium honey one. Bunny. Yeah, yeah, so Ryan, when you go to the when you go to like a Seven Eleven or a corner <laughs> store or any kind of like like Walgreens or Walmart, whatever, you know where they have like the little tasty cake, the Hostess cakes, like with the little like in the Twinkies, they're yeah. in the same display as the Twinkies. Okay, 
Yeah. So they're like a Cinnabon, uh, Katie says. They're similar. They're like mm. Cinnabon if Cinnabon had like a no like cinnamon. a really, Cinnabon. really like destitute cousin. <laughs> <laughs> and Cinnabon is not the same. <laughs> yeah. Sounds but, great. Yeah. yeah. No, no, they, no, they really are so good. You're selling it. <laughs> It's but sure. no, they they, they like trigger something like I've like, never that's, I've like, never really had a honey bun. Gags I don't flips. remember having one. Yeah, okay. they trigger something that's like primal almost, and they're really good. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> if you're hungry. So we're just <laughs> like, about it. It. <laughs> we're just about out of time here, but Homer will not let us go without talking about the episode. He's been those of you watching at Yay. home. He keeps sending in the chat. So and now, so now I guess. Katie too. So go ahead, Homer, tell us about the story. Yeah. <laughs> so um, we watched an episode, I think it's called Return to Grace. And so Ducat is dealing with the fallout from his bringing Zial back to Cardassia. And now he's relegated to flying a freighter ship. And Kira is going on a diplomatic mission and his freighter is going to accompany her, and he is creepy, and somehow at the very end, Kira decides that she is going to look after Zial on Deep Space Nine instead of maybe volunteering somebody else on Deep Space Nine. But I thought it was really, like, the, that interaction, that kind of, like, I mean, if if... That whole like um, effort had an HR department. They would have had a complaint. Well, what about what? Um, advances by Ducat. Oh, well, yeah, that's yeah. always yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. like that's a given. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, I guess that's just the character. Local kind of policy. Yeah, and it's pretty disgusting. Kira, Kira handled it. Oh, sure, it was totally fine. Character. She was totally in charge. Yeah. No, I, I thought that was a sweet gesture I, by her to take Zial in. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think she overdid it a little bit. And then we also got to meet Damar right. uh, for the first time. And he's just kind of like yeah. this, yes, sir, type guy. And we know where he goes from there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. To no, Hero. sir. <laughs> I thought it was weird that... that uh... <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> then, uh, who's have to have who's, a talk later who's oh, doing all this you. chat stuff? <laughs> Come on. You need to talk. Yes, Sirak, please go ahead. <laughs> no, I was just going to say, I thought it was a little weird that uh, Kira basically <laughs> imposed him being a father on her and then basically takes his daughter away from her while they were kind of rebuilding their mm. relationship and getting catching up on old times. So it's it's kind of a weird thing that she's encouraged it and then she also took him away. So I agree. And it, it seemed to me kind of strange that Zial was so willing to go to Deep Space Nine when she was training and she wanted to actually help out her dad with whatever weapon. So that struck me as odd. Right. right. She said that's the only family she has. So she's been treated like an outcast everywhere she goes. She only really has one person that she counts on as family. And I would think that would be kind of strange for her to want to try something new at this point without fully kind of building on herself and having that confidence. And I kind of jumped well, I, don't, I think she didn't want to die either. I mean, if she stayed yeah, well, yeah, didn't want to die. You know, she was really bad 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 bad. Know, there was a possibility that that shit was going to get blown up or mm -hmm. well, was turning, probably yeah. going to kill her or, you know. Well, she knew yeah. she had a target hey. on her because hey. of her mother. Um, right. So it was yeah, safer Katie. to go to Deep Space Nine. You said you had something safer. you wanted to throw throw about uh, this. Uh, I liked it uh, because I I liked the relationship between Kira and Zial, and I liked how Kira kind of taught Zial to defend herself because Zial really did. She was kind of she wasn't ignorant to the situation because she kind of grew up with nothing, but she just didn't have kind of a second backer behind her or like an older sister figure. Mm -hmm. or like an older aunt figure and that's where Kira stepped in. Right. And I think that was something Zial really needed and she also needed another fem a, a good female figure in her life. Mm -hmm. I mean her, her dad was horrible, but she also really didn't have a any female figure. So, 
And I think yeah. she was able, in a way, to connect her mother to Kira. So. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. And, and, and I would like to interject that, um, <laughs> um, <laughs> no, I agree with, with where Katie is going with that. And um, the whole reason that Kira wanted Zial to go live with her father is to give her some sense of normalcy and stability and some family life. But now he's in a completely different situation. And the safest place for her would not be on that ship. So she's thinking of Zial and not everybody else. Mm -hmm. So that's why she takes her under her wing. And the fact that she said, well, she reminds me of me at that age. And I know how, mm -hmm. what a struggle it yeah. was to go through the resistance of the occupation and, you know, having to defend yourself every single minute of every single day why wouldn't she want her to have to not live through that? Yeah. That's my two cents. <laughs> and to think of it, if she lived on DS9, she wouldn't need clothes because Garrick was a tailor. She wouldn't need any <laughs> form of food because Quark had the bar. <laughs> she wouldn't need any type of, she would have literacy through Keiko. Mm. She, so she, can, she would have everything she needed at her hand. Yeah, we're also saying that uh, uh, earlier with Una that it would have been great had we seen some interaction between her and Jake. She could have had a pal. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, that's true. Been a good point. Let's they do that. Yeah, because Nog yeah. went went to Earth. Went to this Earth, is the right. perf this is the perfect situation. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it's interesting Garrett, that they uh, chose to have her then. Um, be pals with Garrick instead, who is mm -hmm. 30, 40 years old. Spoiler or so. alert. <laughs> <laughs> I loved her. No, no, no. Yeah, but no, it's no, Cardassian no. years. Yeah. So. yeah. Oh. <laughs> and I think, yeah, because of the different actresses, she got older. Right. Too. Yeah. So. Oh, that's, right. that's true. It was with an age difference. Years, mm -hmm. Right, right. Yeah. So, so I have a question. Yes. Uh, if anybody's watched this recently, um, I think it was towards the end where Ducat is like pleading with Kira to come and help him fight this war against the Klingons. And like, I thought that speech was super charismatic. And I'm curious if anybody else, you know, kind of had a second thought, like if he was talking to me and that passionate and that charismatic would I be like all right let's do this <laughs> no let's go and get those <laughs> no way I actually no. put in my notes a very convincing argument not that anybody would say yes but that you would admire his oh, yeah. his you know delivery yeah, 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 yeah. It looked like she was saying yes because she was starting to help him develop weapons and and, and figure out a way to turn the ship into an attack ship so she was kind of leading him in the direction of doing what he wanted to do anyways, which was attack that ship. So I thought it looked like she was starting to join forces with him in some type of way. Don't you think uh, she kind of, she kind of got caught up? You know, she was like, feel it. She was like, Oh, this is just like it used to be. You know, like the old days. Yeah, like a reflex. It's like an yeah. old day type. Then yeah. she had the, she still, when she started stepping back, she was like, Oh no, this is not for me. Not yeah, with him. Kind of like that <laughs> in the car. Where <laughs> all back into their resistance pattern too. Mm -hmm. and yeah. I, I thought Ducat was such a jerk every time he brought up Shakar to her. Oh the way he brought it out. <laughs> yeah. You know, like Shakar has so a lot smug. Of <laughs> Played that role well. I'm surprised how easily you fell for Shakar. Right. <laughs> that was perfect. That was perfect. <laughs> it was such a low move. Yeah, I'm not saying it's anything awesome. because it's all amazing. the adjectives and adverbs I used to describe to cut are not podcast friendly. <laughs> oh. Like, like in the, and I can't even. Like, oh, was it charismatic? Would you been convinced? And it's like, I, I can't see past how awful he is. And I, I appreciate the actor and like the actual the like weight yeah. he brought to that yeah, role. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was amazing. But it's just, he's so disgusting. Yeah. And yeah. every time that he's actually nice 
or seemingly kind or charismatic, he's even more There's something disgusting. behind it, yeah. Yeah, yeah it's, so, it's so it. gross yeah. and empty. And so, yeah, so it's like, I couldn't even objectively answer your question, right. TJ, if I wanted to. Yeah. <laughs> one of my, right. And that's one why of my... Kira, Kira said that he just doesn't have that charisma, right? Am I right? <laughs> Uh, One sorry, of my Katie. favorite um, Brian, your agonizer, please. <laughs> Katie's like, whatever, oh, let's God. go talk about yeah. this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on. No, one of my favorite Kira lines uh, is she says it later in the series, but she says to the owl, I wouldn't believe him if he said rain was wet. Wow. <laughs> and I just love that line. <laughs> oh, yeah. Nice. Good one. Oh, yeah, that's good. All right, guys, so we do uh, have to go, but. Thank you all very much. Um, are we still hungry or were we able to kind I think of my mother's cooking pesto so hungry. right now. <laughs> I'm hungry. I want cake. All right. Cake on the way. Uh, so we got to handle popcorn and grilled cheese sandwiches <laughs> next. We'll see what happens. Um, and some Star Trek. Uh, but everybody at home, thank you so much for joining us. Special thanks to Katie, Carly, Homer, Natasha, TJ. Sue, hey. Melissa, Darlena, Yvette, Anne Marie, Skillet. Tim and Sirac Ooh. and everybody at home, thank you. And we'll see you next time. Always remember. The seventh rule. Oh, there we go. Hit that like button. <laughs> Hit that like button. Yeah.